So today I'm going to work on some new tires. kind of uh, murdered out right now and I'm not really sure what the theme is going to be. This is a discussion that uh, Dana and I have on a regular basis. So he seems to have a theme in his head whenever he starts a build and then builds towards that and I seem to just start putting trucks together and not really know where they're going. <laughs> I think this one is going to be in that category. Uh, but uh, just in general, in the black primer, it's kind of starting to look like one of those uh, Midwest, you know, beat up XJ trucks. And uh, this uh, tire that I'm going to be installing today is the uh, really cool, it almost looks like a snow tire, but that's because I'm Canadian. And uh, it's called the Groundhog 2. It's a really nice rubber compound, actually, and I really like the foams that are in it. It's got a really solid uh, white foam in it. From RC Four Wheel Drive store, uh, and we're going to put them on some mini mags today. So let's get started. So the first thing I always do with these is uh, actually just kind of take them apart. Um, I just roll the tire inside out to get the foam out. Uh, that's the definitely the first thing that I always do with tires. Now this is a really nice foam. Oh man. Compared to some of the foams that are the gray color that have come from RC four-wheel drive in days gone by, that is a nice piece of foam. So, here's what I'm going to do. You can see that the mini mag uh, locking ring just sits inside here, but this is the reason why I'm doing this video because uh, there's there's something you really should consider doing when you're trying to install any of these ring-style beadlock tires and wheels uh, and I'll tell you why Do you see here the foam actually over, is wider than the ring than the locking ring uh, there's a whole bunch of foam here that's left over and if you look at it on the side you can't even actually see the edge of the locking ring because there's so much foam so what we're gonna do is cut that off and uh, I like to do this with a couple different ways. It works really well also with body scissors, Blexan uh, body scissors, because they're kind of curved and they work really well. Uh, but my favorite thing, of course, to use is just a really sharp number 11 blade. The reason that we're doing this is because once you get this thing centered in here and you're trying to beadlock the tire onto it, you end up getting a whole bunch of foam caught in the beadlock. And that's a serious problem because it doesn't let the bead seat properly on the rim. So when this thing is actually going to fit together, if you have a whole bunch of foam stuck in here, instead of the tire being right on the, the aluminum, then you end up with a wheel that when it rolls, it kind of rolls wobbly like this. Or when it's rolling, you've got one of the beads that just won't seat properly. I'm going to suggest that almost all the time that that happens, it's actually because there's foam caught in the beadlock. So the simplest thing to do here is just to get your number 11 blade, your nice sharp hobby blade, and about a 45 degree angle, just roll it around on the foam. You just give it a roll all the way around. I'm kind of using a bit of a sawing motion because it seems to... Uh, make a straighter cut almost like that so now what's going to happen is when the tire sits in the beadlock there's no chance of the rubber being interfered with the foam no chance because the foam is simply out of the way on this side you can guarantee that on this side it's going to be in the way you guarantee and there's no way for you to actually get that out of the way when you have the tire assembled so or when you're trying to bolt the beadlock together. So basically this is the trick of the day. Uh, if you put the aluminum insert into the rim, uh, from the rim into the foam before you start cutting, 
and you get it all centered and really nicely lined up inside there so it's even on all sides then what you have is a, a perfect edge that you can cut against so you never take off too much foam and you don't have any issues with the uh, with the tire getting stuck in it and you also know that if you install the the uh, this part of the rim the insert straight in the foam when you're cutting it the foam isn't going to be out of whack you know what I mean it's going to be nice and straight so basically now the trick is just to roll the tire back over it this is really simple just line up the foam with the tire like this and then stick your hand in here between the insert and the actual tread stick your hand in there and hold on to it really tight and then grab the other side of the tire and just roll it over like this just roll it right over pull it out and roll it right over just like that now I'm gonna pull on the tire a bit and allow the tire and the foam to kinda of get seated back into the center of itself and you can also do that by rolling it like this squishing it you know squish it together all the way around that'll get the foam centered back in the rubber so that the tire doesn't wobble when you install it and then uh, you can do it along the side here around the bead as well that'll get the insert centered and now because we've already trimmed out the foam you should be able to look inside the tire here and actually see that there's no foam in the way and that'll that'll tell you that your insert the middle aluminum piece is still centered in the in the foam even though you can't see the rest of the foam now you can definitely tell that your insert is matching up with the line that you cut and that's the part that's going to matter so now what we've got is instead of a bulgy tire like this one where the foam is pushing out on the bead all the time now we've got the tire actually already on the insert and look how flat the sidewall is Look how flat that is. We haven't even cut the foam down in size. All we did was taper out that inside piece. And so now when we actually do the install, it's so, so clean. It's just so much easier to do the install. So put the rim inside, pull out the edge of the bead a little bit like this. I'm just pushing down on the rim and pulling out the side with my thumb right here push down pull out hold the back of the wheel and when you go all the way around you'll see it seat in there like super tidy and it's it's so easy to do now because the foam is guaranteed to not be in the way and there's actually a little lip on the tire right here there's an edge where the bead is meant to roll away away from the wheel and basically you can just stick it in there like that you can see it right away if it's lined up like look how gorgeous that is that is unbelievable and we haven't even locked it in yet so this thing here will just go in the back and you can squish it in there line it up the same way and then holding this as the base push this down with your thumb and just go around and make sure that the rubber is still sitting square in there done and then we'll add these wheel locking hardware here in the back. I'm going to put one in just a tiny bit and then go around the rest of them. So there's one and then on the opposite side we'll lock another one in just so we can see how that is. I mean take a look at how amazing that looks. That is bonkers completely straight absolutely flat pancake flat sidewall and uh, oh man that is really 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 awesome this is gonna look great on the Jeep I want to try it out we're gonna take off that uh, wheel nut here on the back of the Jeep and see what's up I'm pretty excited to see this I always thought this was going to be the perfect combo on here. Oh yeah. 
Yep. I'm already excited. Oh yeah. Oh man, look at that thing. That is perfect. That's the perfect size. Using the uh, C-Max factory built truck here, that is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that. The fitment is perfect. That's going to look so good covered with dirt. Oh man. Gorgeous. Wow. Well, thanks for watching today. I hope that uh, helps you with your uh, rim install. And uh, we have, uh, of course, five bolt and six bolt configurations of these mini mags. And I really, really, really like this tire. The more that I get my hands on it, the more I'm happy with how that looks. And uh, we hope this helps you with your install. And thanks for watching today. We'll see you on the bench next time.